What's up everybody, my name is Kina and I cover personal finance and investing. For many, just hearing the words stock market crash is enough to send a shiver down their spine. But it's also no secret that market corrections are common occurrences with declines of 10% or more occurring every 1.8 years on average. And since the stock market is currently near an all time high, there's no better time to start thinking about how to protect yourself. That way, when the next market downturn does occur, you're prepared and you know exactly how to capitalize on a bear market. Because there's nothing like making money when everybody else has paper hands and is panic selling their meme stock portfolio. Let's get started. Well, folks, the stock market has surprised us once again. Just over a year ago, the market was clawing itself out of the biggest hole since the 2008 Great Recession. But what's happened since then is nothing short of extraordinary. You see, the market's been on a tear these last 12 months, with the S&P 500 up over 37% since this time a year ago, and up over 90% since the depths of the global health crisis. This incredible bull run has led prominent investors, like Michael Burry, who's famous for the big short, and Robert Kiyosaki, to warn investors that we are experiencing the quote, greatest speculative bubble of all time, driven by over leverage and low interest rates, and that the resulting crash will be terrifying. The reality is that nobody knows how this will unfold, but it's never a bad idea to have some cards up your sleeve so you aren't caught off guard when a market crash does inevitably occur. With that said, let's jump into five strategies that you can use to capitalize on bear markets and make even more money during the next downturn. The first strategy is to keep cash on hand. As a bull market progresses, stock prices will naturally be driven above their fair or intrinsic value. And personally, I don't like buying anything that's overpriced, stocks included. As an aside, I like to keep tabs on fair value by looking at the 10 year or Schiller price to earnings ratio for the entire S&P 500. This gives us a general sense. And when we look today in 2021, we can see that stocks in the S&P index are trading at an average of nearly 40 times earnings, which is the highest the market has ever been priced with the exception of the dot-com bubble in the late 1990s. When the market gets this high, I personally start to dial back the amount that I invest without sacrificing the consistency. This means that I still make twice monthly transfers into my stock portfolio. But what I've been doing for the last couple of months is only putting in half the normal amount into the stock market, and then I've been putting the other half into savings. This way, when the market does crash, I will have plenty of cash on hand to buy stocks when they're priced more reasonably. As an example, I was holding about 15% of my portfolio in cash when the pandemic hit and I immediately started dollar cost averaging that entire 15% into the market each week of March and into April of 2020. When I ran out of money in mid-April, prices were still so good that I debated throwing my emergency fund into the stock market as well, but I ended up not taking that risk. Anyways, while patience is required, I think that increasing cash on hand makes sense as a bull market progresses, and I think it's one of the best approaches to ensure that you buy low and sell high and not the other way around. I can think of a couple of counter arguments to the suggestion to hold cash. So in an effort to be unbiased and paint a well-rounded picture, let me address them here. One objection is that many people live by the mantra of time in the market beats timing the market. And to a certain extent, this is true. We know that it's virtually impossible to predict when markets will move up and down. And research has demonstrated that if you missed just the 10 best trading days over the last 20 years, your returns would be cut by over 50%. This means that if you invested $10,000 in the S&P 500 in the year 2000 and missed just 10 days where the market saw the greatest upward movement, you'd be left today with a value of $16,180, compared with a value of $32,421 if you'd stayed invested for the full period. The takeaway here is that selling out of the market is never a good idea. We always want to have some exposure because we don't know where the market's going to move and we should continue to invest consistently, no matter how overpriced the market may appear. The second objection is that inflation will eat away at your cash reserves. And this is especially relevant in 2021 because the Fed stimulus has pushed year over year inflation above 5%. This is more than double the normal amount of inflation. But my experience has been that shorter term losses and buying power due to inflation are outweighed by the benefits of buying the stock market during a downturn. And since corrections of 10% or more occur every 1.84 years on average, we typically don't have that long to wait. My second strategy to prepare for a market crash is to shift away from risky investments and into high conviction stocks or stock market index funds. Listen to Kathy Wood, the founder of ARK Invest, describe the strategy that her fund employs as a bull market progresses, 
which she refers to as broadening out. I'm happy that the market is broadening out. And whenever I see that happen, I say, okay, this bull market has broadened out. This is good news. What we do during these periods is concentrate our portfolios towards our highest conviction names. Uh, And so that's what we're doing. We had uh, extended the number of names in the portfolio from the low to mid 30s at the bottom of the coronavirus. And now we're at roughly 55 for our flagship fund. To summarize, Kathy is saying that as we get further and further into a bull market, the risk of a downturn increases. And therefore, her strategy is to consolidate by selling more risky companies in her portfolio and then to use that cash to buy more of the businesses that she believes in most. This seems very rational, but it does contradict normal behavior. You see, when the market becomes very highly priced, as it is today, it becomes increasingly difficult to make money by investing in solid, stable, well-run companies because the cost to buy them are so high. And then what typically happens is that people start chasing greater returns by putting their money into more and more speculative and risky assets, such as crypto, meme stocks, and SPACs. It's not that I'm against owning risky assets. I currently hold about 5% of my portfolio in Ethereum. But what you really should be doing is buying the risky assets at the start of a bull run, not long after a correction has occurred. Then as the bull market ages, selling out of the risky assets and buying solid, high conviction stocks or index funds is the smart play. And this is because the more risky the asset, the more likely it is to get punished when a market downturn does occur. Conversely, strong companies with stable cash flows will typically lose a lot less value and they will recover a lot more quickly after a bear market. Think about it. If a company has great management, a strong competitive advantage or moat, and consistent growth in cash flow, investors will have much more confidence in that company as compared to, say, the newest overhyped cryptocurrency. My third piece of advice is to avoid trading on margin. Guys, seriously, just don't do it. It's it's not worth the potential gain. If you're unfamiliar, margin trading involves borrowing somebody else's money and using it to invest. And when things go well, you will receive an outsized return. But when things head south, they can head really far south and you might find yourself facing a margin call that you can't afford to pay. And if you can't pay, uh, you might be forced to sell right then and there. And as we all know, the absolute worst thing you can do when a bear market hits is sell out of your stocks, right? You wanna hold them until the market recovers. Again, I think everybody should just avoid margin trading at all times, but if you really have to do it, do it earlier on in a bull market cycle. And then just when things start heating up, just get out and don't do it anymore. Um, That's all I'm gonna say about that. I I understand the temptation to amplify returns, but just uh, just don't. (laughs) My fourth strategy is a reminder that when a market crash starts, hold. If you own a mix of strong, stable companies and index funds, it is virtually guaranteed that your investments will bounce back and eventually go on to achieve new highs. The amount of time that it takes for the recovery will vary. For example, the market took a full five years to recover after the 2008 crisis, whereas the recovery after the 2020 panic-induced crash took just months. But on average, market recoveries take around six months. And during that time period, the absolute worst thing you can do is get paper hands and sell your holdings. Seriously, turn off the notifications on your phone, stop checking the prices of companies you own, just disconnect and, just remind yourself that the economy will always recover. It always has, and it always should. An even better approach would be to be greedy when others are fearful. So use your cash reserves from strategy number one if you did that, and consistently buy more stocks as the bear market unfolds. As long as you have job stability or a secure source of income, this approach can work wonders to amplify your returns, kind of in a similar way as margin trading, but without the risk. In the words of the investor and hedge fund manager, Mark Yusko, Investing is the only business that I know that when things go on sale, people run out of the store. Again, a downturn is the best time to buy. Get as much as you can while it's on sale. My last piece of advice is to take advantage of tax loss harvesting to save money on your taxes. Let me give you an example for how this works using round numbers. Let's say you bought one share of Apple stock for $100 per share. And then during a bear market, the value of the stock drops to $75 per share. Then let's say you sell that share for a loss of $25 you can now use this loss to offset any capital gains you had in the given year and decrease the amount of money that you end up paying Uncle Sam. 
The caveat here is that in order to avoid what the IRS calls a wash sale, you must wait to rebuy the same stock for at least 30 days to qualify for the write-off. If you do this correctly, this can be a very handy way to legally decrease your taxes. And this leads me to the part of the video where I remind you that I'm not a financial professional. And before undertaking this type of tax minimization strategy or any of the strategies mentioned in this video, you should consult a licensed financial professional or CPA. Don't sue me, bro. To conclude, as investors, it's important that we shift our thinking away from stock market crashes are bad to crashes are inevitable. So how can I capitalize during a downturn? If you employ the strategies I mentioned above, you can turn a negative situation into a really positive one. If you found this video useful, consider subscribing. Thank you. I'll see you in the next one.